Well, the government's pleading with president to allow work to continue, WDSU Television. The federal government is shutting down the dredging that was being done to create protective sand berms in the Gulf of Mexico. The berms are meant to protect the Louisiana coastline from oil, but the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Department has concerns about where the dredging is being done. And so leaders of different parishes and others uh, are pleading with the federal government to stop blocking them. Once again, our government resource agencies, which were intended to protect us, are now leaving us vulnerable to destruction of our coastline and marshes by the impending oil. Because the government is all about following the orders of those above you so that the globalists can control society. How does this dovetail with the airline story? I saw an article about a flight from Europe uh, to New Jersey, to Newark, uh, on the 16-hour flight, it was over uh, 100 degrees for much of the flight, and people were panicking. Uh, and I always hear about these articles about how uh, they're under international and national regulations where a plane will be on the tarmac for four, five, six, sometimes 24 hours, and they can't open the door to let the, the hot air out or to let new oxygen in because of a TSA regulation. I mean, we are crippled by regulations. And you go to China, there are almost no regulations, so all the industry goes there. And this is all done by design. Uh, but uh, every day we see articles where they can't put dredge boats out there because the feds say no and the Coast Guard says no. Or where they can't block the estuary so the oil doesn't come in. And most of the oil, uh, according to the NASA photographs, is still out in the Gulf and going towards Florida. Most of it hasn't hit yet, and so there's still time to block these estuaries and rivers and lakes that uh, this oil is going to back up in uh, and, and uh, get into. But the federal government's doing everything they can right now uh, to stop that, because the bigger the crisis, the more power and control these people are going to get. It's just so sad to see this to see all of this uh, just intensifying. Let's get into some economic news here. This is out of the Associated Press. Now remember, they've been telling you for three years that the recession's gonna go away and that the uh, prosperity's right around the corner or that we've reached prosperity. The real unemployment's above 22%. Uh, inflation's higher than what they say. Anybody who is out in the free market and not working for government, where government jobs are up, pays up for government, that is, if it's federal government. New home sales plunge 33% with tax credits gone. New home sales dropped the lowest level on record in May after federal home buyer tax credit ends. And then I've got another story here where the Democratic uh, Congress uh, has now made the decision to cut the middle class tax cuts that Obama promised. And next you'll hear there are actually going to be tax increases. Uh, but the tax increases on the middle class and the wealthy will just be a tax increase on the working class because people will just lay off more employees or cut their, cut their pay. Uh, but new home sales plunge. Sales of new homes collapsed in May, sinking 33% to the lowest level on record as potential buyers stopped shopping uh, for homes once they could no longer receive government tax credits. Continuing, J.P. Morgan sets sights overseas, New York Times. J.P. Morgan Chase emerged from the financial crisis as one of the strongest banks on American soil. Now it wants to uh, make up lost ground overseas. The bank chief executive, Jamie Dimon, announced a series of management changes towards the end on Tuesday. So they've sucked America drive. The locusts are moving on to other, other fields uh, but, um, yeah, oh yeah, the, the big central banks, the big insiders, they're all making record profits right now. They're doing quite well, uh, but the rest of the economy is in free fall. I mentioned this yesterday, but I thought I'd actually get into the headline today. Lord Rothschild Fund joins World Gold Council uh, to put 12.5 million pounds uh, of gold bullion into vault or 12.5 million worth, the article should say. It, 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 that could be misinterpreted as 12.5 million physical pounds. But, uh, and uh, it goes on, it goes on from there. So the elites, I saw another article two days ago where the Saudi royal house has doubled its gold holdings. So that's one reason gold continues uh, to go up and up and up.
Uh, here's one out of the L.A. Times. Of course, the L.A. Times uh, had a story a month ago about the state government is announcing, along with the uh, city government of L.A., that they're no longer going to pave many roads uh, or streets or fix sidewalks. All money must go to interest on the debt to the bankers. All money. Uh, it says Maywood to lay off all city employees, dismantle police department. So record taxes, record regulations, and less government that actually provides a service. Just, this is what they, I mean, in Nigeria, they pay almost all their taxes to the IMF and World Bank. Nothing to the people. It's the same thing in Costa Rica or Argentina or places where these bankers run things. Uh, continuing here, of course, Costa Rica hasn't been fully imploded yet, but they're going to get around to it, don't worry. Uh, I mentioned this yesterday. It was all over the Australian news that, yes, the government will make you install software that censors what you can view, but also tracks what you're doing with messages back in the software down line back to the government servers. And, of course, here the FCC announced last week, and it was in the Financial Times of London and AP, that we'll have a black box with software in our house that tracks everything we do. But not only will it track everything that we do, uh, it will also restrict what we can see. So it's interesting to see the government telling the truth about what they're doing brazenly, but to see the media spinning it. And here's an article out of the News of Australia where they spin it. No antivirus software, no internet connection. And they tell you, oh, it's the special government approved software. And, and more and more, even outside of government control, it's these government software systems and government approved software systems that restrict where you can go on the web, what you can visit, and they're reporting back. A lot of the software will ask, oh, your Yahoo Messenger failed, or oh, your antivirus failed. Would you like to report back what, you know, to the virus company? And people just click yes, and it sends all your information. But now under this, no. Here in the U.S., Australia, Europe, places like Italy, it doesn't matter. They're just going to do it. Australians would be forced to install antivirus and firewall software on their computers, and of course then that's government designed, before being allowed to connect to the Internet under a new plan to fight cybercrime. Now, of course, separately, the government admits this is, quote, stronger than Chinese-style net censorship. And if their computer did get infected, Internet service providers like Telstra and Optus would cut off their connection until the problem was resolved. So, see, now these big ISPs under government control, they're in your computer watching what's going on. What did John McCain say four years ago he wanted if you, quote, downloaded questionable material? They would, quote, kill your computer remotely. That's where this is going, where your computer is nothing but a terminal tied into government, where your cell phone is a terminal tied into government. That's cybersecurity. And the same system is being implemented worldwide. Then they're going to use all these firewalls and sluggish things they're adding to bankrupt and screw up the old web and force you onto Internet 2, where you publicly register and go through their systems, that it's going to be super high-speed connection. And they won't ask you. When they come out to install your new cable or your new, your new TiVo or your new system, uh, your new Netflix, it will just be in the software that you're not allowed to visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. I mean, that's in the FCC announcements. Do you realize how big this is? Those are two of the recommendations that come from a year-long inquiry into cybercrime by the House of Representatives Standing Committee on Communications. Notice England the same week made the announcement and said the same thing. And the same week the U.S. government announces we found porn and hacking and crime on the web. We're going to control your computer and all the ISPs. The White House will have a kill switch on any part of the Internet at once. And Lieberman says, what's wrong with that? China can do it. We've got to be able to do this if we're in a war and they're gearing up for the Iran attack right now. I mean, do you see what they're doing, ladies and gentlemen, how bold this is? In the past decade, cybercrime has grown from a nuisance of the cyber market hacker into an organized transnational crime committed for vast profit and often with devastating consequences for its victims. And there is a lot of real crime on the web, but most of it's government and big corporations. And I'll guarantee you, they've war-gamed attacks on the web the Pentagon has. They're getting ready for false flags. They'll carry out the attack, use it as the pretext to take over the web. Because the web is killing the mainstream media because it's, it's offered real diversity, real 
uh, news and information and real choice. You've got the mainstream media cheerleading and begging for the government to take over the web. And you've got the FCC saying the fees and fines from these boxes will be paid to, quote, support government messages in traditional, respected, trusted, that's in quotes, mainstream media. CBS, ABC, Fox, where the government already has what they call propaganda placement or behavior placement, where the, where the message is not just in the ads, but in the shows themselves, anti-family, anti-gun, pro-vaccine, pro-infanticide, pro-abortion, pro-world government. I mean, you can't even get archy comic books now for your kids, you know, for your eight-year-old. They want to teach them all about not just sex, but, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, anti-family messages, just everything is bathing the population in pure evil.